If you haven't already met someone with Alzheimer's disease or someone affected by it, just wait. You will and you need to be ready. I'm Armstrong Williams and this is The Right Side Forum. Merle Coma, you know firsthand what Alzheimer's is all about from your life. Why don't you just take a few minutes and share your story with our audience? Armstrong, uh, I didn't ask for this story. It was handed to me, as you mentioned, it will be handed to so many people. Uh, my husband was young, um, a doctor, and got early onset Alzheimer's. He was young, strong, atypical, not old, and um, the disease swept over him. Uh, he became too dangerous. We couldn't keep him at home. He was in denial. Uh, it was a, he was the extreme of the cases that so many families uh, wrestle with every day. Uh, five and a half million people have it. Fifteen million of us are caregivers. Uh, it infects the family. It's not just one person because everyone around them is touched. Um, the care is intensive uh, over years. Uh, many people don't like to be called a caregiver because it changes the relationship. But it is a demeaning disease. It takes away your independence, uh, the dignity of who you are. And then you need the caregivers who give you whatever dignity or quality of life there is left. It bankrupts families, uh, either brings families closer or destroys them. We have to stop it now. We, we need it off the table for the next generation. We will not be able to afford this disease going forward. So, Fish Vandenberg, you and your husband, George, who's also joined us today, have really made this your mission. You guys share the Alzheimer's uh, Association here in the, throughout the, this area. Um, obviously, people, when they hear Alzheimer's, it's always when they think about somebody else, they really don't think that it's going to impact them in any kind of way. Uh, and as Ms. Comer so sadly described her journey uh, with Alzheimer's, why should people care? What are the symptoms? And how can it just disrupt your life on a dime? Well, the symptoms are basically the same and different. I mean, everyone has their own um, their own story about how it was. With, with me, my mom was larger than life, and I guess everyone's mother is like that, but she really was. And I saw this woman who would, uh, you should excuse the expression, she was a Democrat, big, and uh, she, I went to Kennedy's inaugural as a kid because she won the state of New Jersey. And I saw this lioness devolve into the vortex of, of Alzheimer's. She forgot who she was, where she parked, you know, at the beginning. And uh, then she became, you know, very wary of people coming into her house and stealing from her, of the bank holding her, her money and not letting her at it. She, you know, um, she became a depressed personality and then she became a silent partner. Um, my mom lasted five years. Meryl's husband has been going for a record, I think, 20 years. And Meryl has her mother there. I mean, Meryl is, is at Alzheimer's central, it seems. And why they should care is, be, well, you can care because you're human. Um, but it, I say to congressional people when I meet them, I said, if you want to avoid Alzheimer's, die young. Because if you don't, by in your, by, in your 80s, it's one out of two. And one of them will be the, the victim and the other one will be taking care of them. And the money it will cost is extraordinary. And, and we, I mean, we are spending $200 billion for this now. And Congress has allotted us 600 million, less than 600 million. So, I mean, anyone who is head of a corporation would be fired for this, for not you know, giving more funds to cure this. You know, George, uh, you know, one of the things that come across in this is that someone that you've fallen in love with, married, have a family, children, aspire for great things, and all of a sudden something changes 
and this person becomes a total stranger to you. You have no idea who they are. You don't recognize them. They can become violent. They can become tempered. They can hit you. Um, they can just walk away and disappear. I mean, it's just something that no one is really trained for. And no matter how many manuals you may read, no matter how many conversations that you may have with friends like Trish, your wife, or Merle who lives this, until you experience it for yourself, you have no idea of what you're about to face. We're gonna come back to George when we return as we talk about this very important topic, Alzheimer's here on the Right Side Forum. Welcome back to the show. Um, Trisha and um, Merle and George are still with us. You know, George, you and your wife, Trish, were big supporters of the larger Alzheimer's organization for a long time, but something triggered or something happened in 2010. You decided to break away and find your own organization, Us Against Alzheimer's. What changed uh, to make you just realize that obviously you were not satisfied? Well, we we thought that there's a lack of urgency, a lack of cadence, a lack of pace in the developments, and we were very frustrated that things weren't moving faster. We felt a sense of passion uh, that our own commitment wasn't being adequately reflected in the progress that was being made or not being made, quite frankly, because Trish mentions that her mother, uh, mother died of Alzheimer's in the early 90s, and here we were in 2010, and nothing had changed. Nothing had changed. And we said, this can't be right. We have got to attack this. So we felt the need of, of picking up the ball ourselves, taking more responsibility for solving the problem, uh, and getting uh, our own philanthropy and our own effort, our own time into the game. So, Merle, what, what was it like when your husband, is, as um, Trish just alluded, uh, he is one of the rare survivors for so long, just can, became and, and remains a total stranger to you, and yet your love and commitment and sacrifice continues? Look around, people do this all the time. You take care of a loved one who's sick. It's just that I've taken care of a loved one longer. And that's what defines you. You never know, as you pointed out before, how strong you are and what you can manage until you're in the middle of it. And I think uh, there's so many caregivers out there. And with great respect, the people who take care of our loved ones who are in facilities and not at home, really deserve our respect. This is not custodial care. This is, you have to be patient. You have to, you're dealing with an adult. You have to negotiate in their world, and their world may not be the reality that we all know. So it is very intense, and we have to honor these people. This is hard, uh, and they do it, and they're stoic, and they believe in giving dignity to others. That drives many of our caregivers today, both in home and the professionals. Uh, so I, I think it's a great tribute to what people will do for one another over time. And who has your back? I, get, I think that's the question that I get from couples. Well, would my husband do that for me? Mm. You know, you know, <laughs> you know I, I, think, I think there's something that, um, and I'm sure there are people who are watching the show today and you're asking yourself, is that, is that really what's wrong with my mother and grandmother and my aunt? Is that what it is? Could Armstrong just probe to guess a little more to get deeper into what the symptoms are? Because maybe I need to get help because I don't know how to handle this. And I want to come back to you to answer that. Okay. That's why I'm putting it on the table. But I, you do need to explain to our audience the role of the caregiver and how oftentimes they end up dying before the patient and the toll that it takes on them and the commitment that is necessary to take care of someone with Alzheimer's. Well, I think Meryl is really more. She's it, my best friend. She <laughs> saved my life by being Oh, no, no, there. no, but we're going to have Trish <laughs> answer the question because we want you to deal <laughs> with the symptoms for people okay, who are yes. wondering whether their yeah. loved one is in that state now. Well, people really do hide out, you know. Uh, they don't want to ad admit that they have Alzheimer's. I mean, and it falls in a very different way. I mean, 
uh, the African American community is twice as likely to have Alzheimer's, but it's not something you discuss. I mean, it, you know, it's not something you want to discuss. After all, it's it's a fatal disease, and you see yourself evolving. So you get, and women, by the way, two thirds of the caretakers and two thirds of the victims. We are. This is one ceiling we didn't want to break. Um, so they get depressed. They can't find keys. They can't find. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to, to misplace your keys. It's another thing to put them in the refrigerator. They, they are, they, I mean, they, you can see them devolve, but they hide out so that you won't think they're doing that. And What about their dressing and their habits and their eating and that things that... That becomes more slovenly, uh, you know. Uh, but that's it. Uh, I mean, at but the beginning. But do they sometimes forget who you are? The grandkids yeah, can that happen? Yes, yes. But you know, I mean, some of us. I, I haven't remembered names. I tell, tell my kids to wear name tags. I mean, I haven't remembered them forever. Uh, I mean, names. You know, that's not my forte. But yes. So you see. I mean, everyone has it a little differently. But the the depression that's there, the denial that's there, and that's denial for the whole family. So when that starts. You want it on the ground floor, not you know, not after you're so far gone that you can't do anything about it. So, so what are the the, the media recognized symptoms? All right, let me let me first tell you what puts you more at risk. If you're overweight, if you have diabetes, depression, if you have any addiction, all of that increases your risk 50 percent, mm. just for the starters. Also, people do hide out because uh, that's the last thing. So you're fighting for control. So what happens if you were never good at remembering names? That's not a sign if you keep forgetting names. If you uh, were very good at math and say, uh, honey, uh, where do I sign the check? That's a flag. Basic financial decision making goes first because the executive functions begin to break down. The ability to do things you typically did longer, harder. That's why many times people stay later at work trying to get what they normally did in five hours. It takes them 10 hours. Uh, behaviors that are inappropriate. Uh, I used to say, um, one of the chapters that I never put in the book is that your husband peeing on the barbecue. The behaviors are totally inappropriate. But the social filters go down, so they'll be very direct and honest with you, embarrass you, uh, and you're apologizing for the behavior. Now you could say, oh, they're depressed. People like Rita Hayworth, they thought she was um, an alcoholic. So it masks itself in many ways, but you must pay attention. 50% of people, Armstrong, go undiagnosed. If you look at the percentage of those Meals on Wheels being delivered, those people are alone in dementing. It's a heartbreak. And dementia can be something very simple, and I don't care what you call it, all right? It's how people behave. If memory is part of it, if someone's had a stroke and all of a sudden they're having memory problems, that's vascular dementia. That's an issue for you because it complicates everything you want to do for a loved one and it will cost you six times as much to take care of a loved one if they have those memory issues. Uh, Trish gave you a few. The, heart, the heartbreak now is because of the numbers that are growing. Children, and when I say children, I'm old enough <laughs> that 18 to 34 year olds are taking care of their grandparents because their parents are out working. Can you imagine what it does to a child to be rejected by someone they love or not have stories told about when your daddy was a, a little boy. We are, we are tearing apart generations. It's a heartbreak and yet you have to bathe and toil. The hardest thing for a man to do is bathe and toilet his mother. And the idea of that, I would never want my son doing for me what I've done for my husband and my mother with, with love. It's unacceptable. I don't want to be remembered that way, and I don't think as a generation we want to be remembered that way. You have taken leadership in a remarkable way to even put this issue on the table. There's so many disparity issues that are floating out there, but this one is right at the top. Hold, hold mm -hmm. that point, and, mm -hmm. and we'll be back. We'll, don't go away. More about the cost of Alzheimer's disease when the Right Side Forum continues.
So George, let's continue to talk about us yeah. against Alzheimer's and the clinical trials, the cause, helping people get help. Um, your wife spoke about the disparities in minorities communities. How do we close that gap? Well, it's a, this is a huge focus of ours. In fact, we need more minorities in clinical trials because, in fact, the medicines that may work for whites may not work for blacks or Latinos. So we need to get blacks and Latinos and Asians into clinical trials to assure that the medicines work for everybody, not just for whites. So one of our efforts, and Merrill is leading this charge uh, from a patient and caregiver point of view, I'm leading it from the industry point of view, is to get more minorities into clinical trials. But Trish said, mentioned the, the statistics. Blacks twice as likely to have this disease. Partly it's genetic, but partly it's because of diabetes and other conditions, which are risk conditions uh, for, for Alzheimer's. Um, smoking is one of the, the great uh, risk factors uh, for a variety of conditions, but including, including Alzheimer's. But the costs to the society are huge. The actual medical costs of uh, servicing and providing health services uh, to d dementia victims is larger than it is for cancer by 50 percent. Mm. Uh, it is greater than heart disease. So it is now the most expensive disease uh, for America. And when you add on top of that the cost of caregiving, which are long and intense and drawing people out of the workforce, it is now twice the cost of heart disease uh, and almost three times the cost of cancer to society. And this is a global issue because in fact two-thirds of the world's victims of dementia are in low and middle income countries, so China, India, Africa, increasingly populations being affected by dementia. So this is now a problem that is substantially larger than the problem of AIDS in terms of the numbers of people being affected. It is in fact larger in terms of costs when the amount of money that we've invested in AIDS actually has been extraordinary and it is working. We finally found a way to manage this disease and ultimately a way to cure that disease. We have not got a medicine on the market for Alzheimer's that does anything to stop or slow this disease. Talk, talk about how do people access information, websites, books, to get an understanding of where they can get help? Well, for care there are many sites that are really focused on the care. But to sign up for the future, to sign up to protect your family and get ahead of it, means that all of us step up and begin to say, we want to be part of the prevention trials. What we learned is by the time you have the disease, it's too late. So we need healthy, asymptomatic adults that say, this is unacceptable. Let's change this for the future and sign up and now you're mobile so you can play brain games that track yourself. You can sign up and say, put your name down and if there is a trial, here I am. It takes all of us to step forward a bit because we will not fix this. We can diagnose today and the diagnosis is getting so much better that if you're in your 40s, your brain cells are already beginning to slow down it becomes full-blown in your 70s. So let's go younger. Let's figure this out together. But it is critical that we do it now. Are, are, are we making progress in terms of medicating it, Trish? No. We're not. <laughs> no. I mean, not. I think we're on our way to maybe finding some medicine, a, a little stopgap by 17 or 18. But, but and I, I don't, I'm not trying to interrupt you. The, what the, ultimately what our audience needs to understand is that this does lead to death. It's, it, that's all it leads to. I mean, you know, there's nothing. I mean, they have a temporary saying it's status quo for a year maybe, but, but the diagnosis is you are going to die. And, you know, and what I want your audience to, to do is write a, about this to their co congressional people. I can't because, of course, I live in D.C. But um, to say, you know, you, you've got to do something about this. A AIDS, which, um, HIV AIDS, which is a manageable disease, oh, it'll be a manageable disease, is, gets $3 billion. We get $600 million. I mean, come on, say to, the, to your Congress, give us more because it's gonna get all of us. Is there a website? 
oh, us yeah. against alzheimers.org. Us, and, us, and us against, against alzheimers.org. And, alzheimers and women to, against to, alzheimers. To, 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 Merrill, to Merrill's point, uh, we named our organization us against yeah. Alzheimer's in the view that it's going to take all of us right. to get into yeah. this fight. Thank you so much for being here, George Brandenburg and Trisha Brandenburg of Us Against Alzheimer's and Merle Coma, CEO of the Joffrey Bean Foundation's Alzheimer's Initiative. Up next, this week's featured young leader.